The film begins by showing a flight plane called Deccan Air. At that time, the pilot contacted the nearest airport to make an emergency landing because the fuel was in a critical condition. But unfortunately the airport refused and did not allow the plane to make an emergency landing there. Suddenly, someone took the phone from the tower guard and the man's name is Mara. He ordered the pilot to land in a nearby Air Force area. After that Mara rushed off with his friend on a motorbike. They headed for the Air Force Air Base. Meanwhile, the situation on the plane became increasingly chaos when the fuel was almost completely gone. The soldiers there were surprised by a plane that suddenly landed. Elsewhere, Mara continues to ride his motorbike and breaks through the guard of the soldiers to get to the plane. But unfortunately the pilot, Chai, was unconscious because he was seriously injured. Not long after, Mara arrived at the plane. He was worried about Chai's condition. But moments later the soldiers came to surround him. They beat and arrested Mara for being presumptuous to land the plane there without the permission of the military. The story flashback to six years before, a woman named Sundari and her family were riding in an old train. Sundari is a woman who has been rejected by 20 men and on that day, she and her family will meet the 21st man. During the trip, all of her family complained about the train, like the bad smell and the hard seats. Arriving at the destination city, it turned out that there was only a barren village with poor people. Then, came a man named Mara. He is the 21st man who will be paired with Sundari. Mara says that he doesn't own anything, but he has a dream to create an airline. Sundari said that she had been rejected by 20 men because she could not cook, sew, dance or sing. All she wanted was to open a cake shop. Not long after, Sundari's family was offered a meal by Mara's family. At the dinner table, everyone was talking about airplanes. Mara also had a long chat with Sundari about their respective dreams. Seeing Sundari's kind and intelligent behavior, Mara agreed to marry her. However, Sundari needed time to answer it. That night, Sundari's family stayed at Mara's place. Mara and Sundari tell each other about their past, Mara said that his village used to be very poor, even the trains didn't stop there, making it difficult for villagers to travel anywhere. Mara's father was a teacher, he often wrote many letters to the government asking them to stop the train there. However, the government never paid any attention to the letter. Mara was starting to grow up, so he went forward using his method by demonstrating and it often ends in riots. Their demonstration was blocked by local officers. Mara, who was emotional at that time threw a stone at the carriage and hit one of the protesters. Arriving home, Mara's father was furious with him for his behavior. In the debate, Mara said that he did that so that the condition of their village could change. The situation was getting worse until finally his father got angry and slapped him. Then, his father said that if one day he died, Mara was forbidden to light his pyre. At that time, Mara left the house and decided to join the Air Force. Long story short, Mara, who has been carrying out his daily life as a military man tries to send a letter to his family. But his father was still mad and he threw the letter away. Mara's mother immediately asked for the letter and read it aloud. In his training, Mara lived a quite heavy training and on one occasion, he got a three-minute phone call. He called his family, but when his father wanted to talk, suddenly the phone got interrupted and disconnected. Mara's father is disappointed and thinks that his son is still angry with him. Meanwhile, Mara wanted to call his family back but the time for calling had run out. Back to the present time, when Mara was talking to Sundari. Not long after, Sundari's family came over to pick up Sundari because it was late at night. The next day Mara waited for an answer from Sundari, whether she accepted their matchmaking or not. Sundari said that she did not agree, and this caused her family shocked. When Mara asked why Sundari refused to marry him, she said that they need to make their dreams come true first and then will they get married. Not long after, Sundari and her family left Mara's house. This not means Sundari doesn't like him, even now Sundari is starting to fall in love with Mara. Since then, the two of them have worked to make their dreams come true and Mara struggled around the bank to find a loan, but was always refused. Three years after the matchmaking, Mara seems to be boarding a plane to meet Paresh Goswami, someone he really admires. Paresh is the owner of the airline Jazz Airlines. At the airport, Mara meets a woman named Sidra who is a reporter. Sidra reminds him that he will not be able to meet Paresh as he is a famous person who is hard to find. Mara replied to Sidra's statement by showing a business class ticket. He intends to meet Paresh there even though the ticket price drained his bank account. In the plane, Mara sees Paresh sitting in front of him. He walks ahead to talk to Paresh. Luckily, Paresh would listen. Mara begins to explain about his dream to build an airline that the poor people of India can fly. But the people there laughed at him. Mara again explained that there is no need to go through a travel agent to board the plane later, because that is what makes the ticket prices very expensive. Mara suggested buying tickets online using the internet and post offices in each region. Paresh is surprised by Mara's idea but he rejects it. He did not want porters and beggars to board his plane. Later, Paresh ordered that Mara be transferred to economy class, but of course Mara refused because he had bought a business class ticket. Paresh whispered something to a flight attendant and not long after the pilot suddenly announced he was going to make a U-turn due to a technical error. Finally, like it or not Mara had to get off the plane. At the airport, Mara meets a passenger named Prakash Babu who is attracted by his idea on the plane. 
They also chat at a restaurant and Mara again explains his crazy idea to create a low-cost airline for Indian people. Finally, Prakash decides to team up with Mara. In fact Prakash asked him to come to his office next month. The next day, Mara went to Sundari's cake shop to inform her that he had successfully passed the first step. Sundari's shop looks much more advanced, but she admits that she is married and has two children. Mara who heard it looked upset and disappointed with Sundari. But apparently Sundari lied to Mara. When Sundari was selling cakes, Mara approached her for the second time, Mara intends to marry her and she finally agrees to marry him. The love that has been hidden for three years can finally be conveyed. The wedding day arrived and all people looked happy, especially Mara and Sundari who have officially become husband and wife. Shortly Mara goes to Prakash Babu's office to discuss their plans. Mara begins to explain that he intends to rent a plane and not buy it. He was sure that this plan would most likely succeed. Although at first the people there seemed out, but in the end, they were ready to cooperate with Mara. Prakash asked him to give 47 locks to order the plane as soon as possible. Mara started fighting for the money. Mara's mother borrowed money with her family land as collateral, and not only that, Mara also has to ask permission from the Director General of Aviation named Anand. Mara waited for hours but there was no call. Until the afternoon, the Director General asked Mara to return on the next day. Just like yesterday, Mara never got called. The Director General again told him to come the next day and so on. Mara feels ignored and he decides to meet the President face to face, with the help of a journalist he met on the plane. Finally Mara managed to meet the President and he explained the reason why he really wanted a low-cost airline for the poor people in India. It turns out, behind his persistence there is a very sad story. Dash. Go back to the past, when Mara was still an Air Force soldier. One day, Mara's mother called and said that his father was sick. His mother asked him to come home immediately because all this time, his father had endured just to see Mara return home. He runs towards the airport, but at the airport he gets into trouble. By that time, the economy class tickets had sold out and all that was left were business tickets. But his money is not enough to buy the business class ticket. Because in an emergency, Mara tried to find a loan at the airport. He looked like a lunatic but the people at the airport ignored him and no one cared about him. He ended up being kicked out by airport security officers. With no other choice, he returned to his hometown by bus with a very long time. Meanwhile, his father was dying. When he got home, he found that people had gathered at his house and it turned out that his father was dead. Mara's mother was disappointed because he had come so long, even his father's words used to come true because Mara could not light a fire to cremate his father. His mother reads the letter from his father in front of him. Every word there seemed to slice his heart because it turned out that all this time his father was very proud and loved him. Because of this sad story, Mara will work hard so that his experience does not happen to other people. The president, who was touched by Mara's story finally helped him in the licensing process. Reluctantly, Anand signed the permit. Not long after, Mara's aircraft began to be designed and named Deccan Air. When the plane is about to be flown for the first time, there is a problem again. As it turns out, Prakash is Paresh's errand man who was deliberately sent, so that Mara can go this far. After he managed to get a flight permit, Paresh made new regulations through Anand as the Director General of Licensing. The regulation states that every flight must provide a blueprint to the Director General of Aviation. This made the airline that leased the plane to Mara, took back their plane because of the sanctions they received for not being able to show the blueprint. Now, Mara no longer owns a plane. In fact he had mortgaged all his parents' land in his own house. Mara immediately protested to Anand. But it's useless, because Anand doesn't care and Mara is kicked out of the office. Full of anger, he comes to Paresh. The security guards came and struggled to arrest Mara who was on a rampage. Mara sees Paresh on the second floor looking at him. Mara who began to despair with all his failures became often fighting with his wife, from this fight, it is known that Sundari has always supported him and she is the only person who is very sure if one day, his dream will come true. Time goes on and Mara is still sad for what he has gone through. He realized that he had gone too far with his wife. Then he immediately looked for his wife and apologized to her. Sundari even gave a surprise and said that she was pregnant. The next day, Mara had the idea of turning a cargo plane into an airplane. He plans to use a small plane in order to save fuel. But the problem now is that he doesn't have the money to build an airplane. Mara also borrowed money from Sundari and his uncle. However, the money was still not enough and luckily, the villagers donated their wealth so that Mara could start his flight immediately. However, the Deccan Air is in trouble again. The tracks, which are mostly controlled by Paresh, forbid Deccan Air planes from landing on their territory. But Mara still didn't give up, he made his own plane trajectory and made use of long abandoned airport in India. Mara's plan is slowly starting to pay off, he sells tickets via internet and cooperates with the trains. Finally, the inaugural flight of the Deccan airplane was realized. Unfortunately, when its flight the fuel is almost empty. But Paresh ordered the ATC to deny the plane's emergency landing. Then, we are brought back to the scene at the beginning of the story, where the plane has made an emergency landing and Mara has been captured. At the Air Force military headquarters the person processing Mara's sentence was Naidu, his former leader when he was in the Air Force. Naidu is an honest soldier. 
Paresh had asked Naidu to incriminate Mara's punishment but Naidu refused. Long story short, on August 16, 2003, after going through a very difficult process, Deccan Air will fly and be inaugurated as a commercial aircraft. After everything was ready, Mara sat quietly on the plane with the other passengers. Again, the Deccan Air is having problem when about to take off, there was damage to the wing of the plane that made everyone on board panicked. Seeing the situation getting more precarious, Mara immediately entered the pilot room and took over it. Luckily Mara's plane was able to stop. Because of the chaos, the Prime Minister who previously helped Mara decided to leave and Mara was also attacked by thousands of questions from reporters. He is suspected of ignoring international security by selling the tickets cheaply. When feeling failed and hopeless, Mara was a little happy because his wife had just given birth to a daughter. Mara immediately investigated why his plane failed to take off. Turns out, he found someone who was deliberately negligent and refueling. That person was Mahoner, who had been bribed by Paresh to thwart the flight. Due to an incident that could endanger many lives, Deccan Air was also subject to very heavy sanctions. Luckily, Mahoner finally admitted his mistake and finally Deccan Air was not given a heavy penalty. Despite being free from sanctions, Deccan Air has to accept the harsh reality that people no longer believe in them. They believe that cheap airline tickets do not guarantee the passenger's safety. Indians are afraid to board Deccan Air planes. Mara who was increasingly desperate, screamed as loud as he could to let go of what he was feeling right now. He had been abandoned by the minister so, he started looking for new investors. Then, there is an investor who wants to work with him. However, he flatly refused because the investor wanted the tickets to be sold at a high price. His act of rejecting the great opportunity was opposed by his best friends. His best friends were very disappointed, because he was willing to leave the military just to make Mara's dream come true. But right now, he hasn't gotten anything and he's in a slump. On a radio owned by Sidra, Mara exposes all of Paresh's crimes. He says Paresh is a rich man who is afraid that poor people can fly with him. He also justifies any means so that Mara's dream does not come true. The event was heard by many people, but Paresh did not remain silent. He said that cheap planes cannot guarantee the safety of passengers, while the priority of airlines is the safety and security of passengers. The debate between the two ensued so that the public could not determine which one was right and which one was wrong. Until finally, Mara decided to get the public's trust back. He flies the three people he loves most with Deccan Air. They are his mother, wife and daughter. He doesn't even sleep to guard the plane as it could be fatal if Paresh breaks it back. A luck began come to Mara. There, he meets with Naidu and their Air Force soldiers who are ready to guard the Deccan airplanes. Then, on August 25, 2003, it became a historical day for Deccan Air Airline. Mara brought his family. He was also waiting for the other passengers. But unfortunately, no one came there. When they were about to cancel their flight, suddenly, a friend came and informed Mara that the ticket booking application was having problems. In fact, Deccan Air tickets have been sold out. This indicates that public trust in Deccan Air is still great. The plane flew perfectly and landed safely without the slightest problem. On that day, Mara's dream came true. Finally, he was able to take the poor to fly with him on his plane. The situation becomes even more emotional when a grandmother thanks Mara for taking her flying. Mara couldn't help but hold back his tears of joy. He saw his mother coming down with a photo of his father. Then, his mother immediately hugged him. How happy she is, seeing her son's dream has come true. Not long after, there was a phone call for Mara. Turns out it was a call from Paresh. He wanted to invite Mara to cooperate, but Mara firmly refused. Now he has won the battle and he will blow away the poor people. The film closes by showing Mara and his two friends walking happily, because their dreams have succeeded and come true.